What is your expertise? What is it that you are selling? Are you selling a product or a service? Then you are an entrepreneur. Are you selling money and buying equity? Then you are an investor. Are you selling your expertise and your time and you are a consultant? Maybe there are other ways of uh, providing value in the ecosystem as well. But these are three fairly well understood ways of going about measuring, generating and deploying what you have and what others might need. So I have had an experience in two of these. And now I am testing the third. I have never been a consultant. I have never sold my time or, or expertise. But recently I decided why not. And I'm doing various kinds of experiments. So, for example, I receive a lot of uh, pitches for people who are looking for investment. And of course, together with my team, we analyze which are the best, we invite those uh, who are ready, in our opinion, to pitch. And recently, you may have noticed, we turned these pitches, not all of them, but many of them, to be live. And uh, Network Society Pitching Live, which is alive on pitching.live as a website, is uh, a fun way of uh, making these uh, sessions uh, interactive, um, an opportunity to learn for many other teams, uh, how to pitch, what mistakes maybe to avoid. And it is also a great way for the team who comes on board to um, make themselves known. And of course, uh, it gives me the opportunity to ask uh, the questions that I would be asking anyway. So, I decided to also allow teams that maybe are not ready for pitching yet, for whatever reason, uh, to um, book a, a pitching review or project review session with me. And uh, it is really uh, wonderful to see how smooth uh, the process can be, thanks to uh, tools that are available immediately and to anybody. Um, rather than uh, having uh, a lot of uh, friction uh, in uh, receiving the pitch, booking the appointment, getting paid, uh, and so on, uh, the whole thing is set up uh, with just uh, putting various tools together. So uh, the pitch deck can be sent via email or uploaded in a form. The uh, appointment can be booked via Calendly uh, and the payment uh, for the time that is booked can be uh, immediately made via a credit card. So uh, the form uh, is integrated and everything uh, really works uh, very well. I am also uh, offering a money-back guarantee on the 90-minute session where 30 minutes, uh, the project is uh, presented and described, 30 minutes, I give feedback, and then 30 minutes, we discuss uh, what can be done, what are the next steps, and, and, and things like that. And, uh, of course, this can be adjusted as needed. The session is recorded, transcribed, and the project receives the recording and the transcription as part uh, of the value that is delivered to them. They can come, not just one person. Uh, it is, of course, recommended that the CEO is the one delivering uh, the, uh, the, the, the pitch or describes the, the project. But up to five people can join in the same session so that uh, many more points of view can contribute uh, to making it uh, really valuable for them. And uh, um, once again, 
I really uh, want to uh, make this easy for anybody to, to accept and to go with it. And that is why I am offering uh, this uh, 30 days, uh, no questions asked, uh, money back guarantee. I said 30 days, it's actually not 30 days, whenever, whatever, doesn't matter. Um, the, the, the 30 days money back guarantee is a standard, right? Uh, in retail and in many other uh, ways, mail order, uh, online, if you buy something from Amazon, you can return it. I think it is a great way for expressing um, appreciation for the business that you are receiving on one hand and confidence in the value that you are providing on the other hand. Many years ago, uh, when I started one of my first uh, businesses, it was still uh, in packaged software, right? And packaged software was sold in boxes and the box would contain either a floppy disk at the beginning or the CD uh, later on. And uh, there would be quite an obsession about piracy and uh, whether uh, people uh, would um, abuse uh, the software license in, in some way. And uh, I remember that at the time, uh, in the 90s, uh, in Italy, I introduced uh, something like the first time a no questions asked money back guarantee uh, on the software that was purchased, whether directly from my firm or through the distribution channels in the stores. And this was unheard of to the point that the stores had an official policy not to take back any software package that was open. You could only bring them back unopened software. So I guess even though they are required by law to have either seven days or maybe already 30 days, is that you would go home and then you would have buyer's remorse and you would decide that uh, you shouldn't have bought what you bought and you would bring it back. But in the meantime, you would just put it on the shelf and contemplate it. You would not touch it. Well, isn't that crazy? Isn't it pointless? Also, software piracy was easy. It is easy and it should be easy to find software and to start using that software. Today we call it freemium. You start using something for free with certain features and then you like it so much and you want more features that you start paying for it. At the time it could have been called shareware or trialware where you could download the software and use it for 30 days and then you were supposed to start paying for it if you kept using it. But why would it be a problem to do the reverse that you buy the software, you pay for it, and then if you decide that you want to stop using it, you get your money back? The classical objection is that, oh, it will be abused. People would ask for their money back, but still keep using the software that um, they, at that point, don't have the license for, or they didn't pay for. And my opinion was at the time, and it still is, that it is worth trusting your client, it is worth trusting the customer. Because it is a beautiful way of opening yourself up to a new relationship. And it is, this is true, I would say, most of the time, if not all the time, not only in sales, but uh, in life. And, and yes, there will be those that uh, maybe abuse it, but you learn from them as much or maybe more. You receive value through that. That, um, 
broken relationship will teach you how to adapt and maybe how to deliver more value so that it is impossible to abuse because the continued availability, for example, of future value is going to be the one that guarantees that nobody will want to, to break it. And that was uh, the experience back then, 30 years ago. Practically nobody, not one in a hundred, not one in a thousand, not one in 10,000 would abuse this kind of uh, thing. Uh, and when somebody really wanted to get their money back, we would do everything possible to make sure that they got their money back, whether it was $50 or $100 or $5,000 or $1,000. There were those uh, expensive software packages in retail stores too. And uh, sometimes we had to ask the customer to please go to the retail store and then have them call us so that we would confirm that, yes, they could refund the customer, and then in turn, the retail store would be covered by this guarantee and they wouldn't lose money. And it was great. So, based on that experience, I fully believe that I can apply the same today in this kind of project review and pitch review service that I am offering uh, to, to, to startups and to projects. So I am experimenting uh, and I am very curious to how it is going to go, what is going to happen, and then iterating and maybe scaling. Except that, of course, the traditional consulting business is kind of the opposite of scalable because your time is measured by the money you receive, so you cannot tell your client, oh, by the way, I am going to deliver the value rather than in 90 minutes, in 10 minutes, but please pay me the same. So uh, it will be interesting to, to see uh, what uh, this is going to mean. I do believe in scaling. I do believe in automation. I do believe in the fact that uh, uh, the challenges of the consulting business should uh, be addressed and, and resolved and not uh, through the progressive decrease on the uh, hourly rates, for example, right? I want to surround myself with ever more effective uh, support systems so that I can keep delivering higher and higher uh, levels of uh, value uh, and justify an increasing um, economic relationship rather than a decreasing economic relationship. Not everybody believes uh, that this is possible. I was, for example, astonished to learn recently that uh, Upwork kind of threw in the towel. Upwork, um, which many of you will be familiar with, is a pretty good platform for finding uh, freelancers either directly or through agencies and uh, to engage with them from copywriting to uh, code, coding, uh, developing uh, applications for mobile or or uh, personal computers, uh, to uh, designing logos or designing entire advertising campaigns. And um, you have to go through the um, process of being able to articulate what you want. And of course, that is in itself a very good exercise because it is a very common experience for consultants that uh, uh, there is a deep misunderstanding between them and the client of what uh, the client uh, is, is describing, what the consultant is understanding, and so on. There are even uh, cartoons about uh, the ridiculous levels of misunderstanding that this can uh, imply. 
And then the second part is uh, that uh, if you complete the jo job description and you post it, you will be flooded with, uh, with offers. Um, I uh, used it um, many times and it is a common experience that you describe a job and the morning after you have hundreds of candidates uh, ready uh, to compete for that job. And some of them will be very easy and very fast to be discarded because they are robotically apply and without even having uh, understood or maybe even having read what the requirements were. Others will be very good matches. And then, of course, you will have to decide do I pay more because I believe I will get more value or do I pay less? And then um, there is an interview process with the final candidates. And uh, there can be some tests. For example, I like to run a paid test. If the engagement is uh, continuous, then you can reasonably say to the candidate, listen, why don't we do a test? I will pay you for it. Uh, and then based on that, we will be able to better understand if this thing is going to work. Uh, for example, uh, copywriting can be done like this. And then uh, you will know if the person writes in the kind of tone that you want, uh, if you will be able to uh, really uh, rely on the person doing any kind of uh, research that uh, is needed. The Final step, of course, is to decide who you want to hire for that particular job and then work with them, assign milestones, pay them regularly. And the Upwork platform supports all these uh, and, and many other processes as well. Now, what I didn't know and I discovered recently is that in order to not have to discover and understand how freelance consultants and freelance developers and copywriters and logo designers and all of that, how can they add value in a globally connected marketplace where there is a clear and intense competition from Pakistan and India and China with thousands and tens of thousands of eager and, and qualified candidates for every job compared to much more expensive freelancers in the US, they separated the marketplace. It is not a global marketplace anymore. You can list jobs that are US only. In a kind of a protectionist perversion of what should have been a, a global marketplace. And that US only job is going to be paid at US rates and only US uh, locations can apply. It doesn't matter, for example, if you are a US person living um, um, abroad, and you are a U.S. citizen, you cannot apply. You have to be in the U.S., reside in the U.S., and, and then you can, you can apply. Now, in my opinion, this is a huge defeat. It is a defeat for the marketplace, but it is also a defeat for U.S. freelancers who are weakened by this kind of protection because they are not forced to understand what kind of value they can add. The global competition is a reality and it is not going to go away because this competition is, is there or because of this protection being there. So, I am not planning to uh, do that. I am not planning to diversify my rates and make it more expensive for the US, less expensive for, for India or, or China. What I am planning to do is to search for value, keep searching for value. What can this be? Well, 
for example, the recording, the transcription of these meetings. Another easy value that you know because you have been following these episodes of the context is um, the topic analysis and the chart. Another will be uh, the collection of uh, every reference and URL and source and report and PDF that comes up during that meeting or further, and so on and so forth. There will be many others, I am sure. So, these experiments are fun. I am looking forward to uh, engage with interesting projects that recognize the, the value, and maybe they see it as a stepping stone uh, for me to become an advisor or a mentor, uh, and maybe also an investor. And uh, is it um, a traditional kind of approach? that you would be paying the investor before they start investing? No, not at all. Uh, will some be incensed and, and uh, will they absolutely categorically refuse this kind of relationship? Totally. And that's fine. Uh, but of course, uh, there can be many interesting things that are being born from it anyway. So that is why I'm going to do the experiment and uh, maybe update you in uh, one of the future episodes of uh, uh, the context uh, to see how it is going. In the meantime, uh, if you haven't uh, become a supporter on Patreon, uh, this is a time to go and check it out. There are four uh, levels uh, to become a, a, a member of my Patreon community a fan, a supporter, a sponsor, and a benefactor. And these are at different levels of economic uh, commitment. And I articulate on Patreon, and you can read it in detail, the differences of how I share content with you, I share my attention with you, I share my knowledge with you, and I create for you. These are the different things that happen at the different levels of mutual uh, engagement and, and mutual relationship. Um, so let me know what do you think about that as well and uh, see you at the next episode. Oh, another thing. You may notice uh, that uh, the uh, background is different. Uh, I'm in front of a green screen. I had this green screen for a long time, but I didn't end up using it for many reasons. Uh, my team and I are thinking about the next season of the context and how to upgrade the production uh, quality and the production values of the context. And this uh, is uh, part of that. Uh, and um, what you see is not yet uh, the uh, graphical design and all the identity and all the value that we are uh, planning to put into season three, but it is a hint in the direction where we are going. So this is uh, the last thing that comes into my mind and see you next week.